everyone and welcome to the fourth vlog i'm not sure if this is going to be the last if so let's make the best out of it so the last time you saw me i was at rosa in brussels the vlog kind of ended abruptly after uh, I did my interview with Olivia because there was some time shortage and Obi still had to edit uh, all of the footage. So yeah, I'm going to tell you a bit more about Rosa because I didn't do that the last time and show you their archives and stuff as well. So um, Rosa is a library and expertise center surrounding everything related to women, gender, LGBTQ. They've existed since the 1970s and they started off as a grassroots kind of organization library because of the much needed documents surrounding the issue. You can still go over there, lend books. This is a very cozy place to study. They have big archives going back until the very beginning of the 20th century. When I asked Stephanie about, you know, black archives and stuff like that, she said it's very limited and also not that easy to find within the archives so this week i'm going to try to interview as many people as possible to ask them questions about organizations because i really want to get a good idea of what organizations i should really be including in this project as a starting point but yeah we'll see how it goes and stay tuned good morning so today we're thursday the 25th as I told you in the previous vlog, I wanted to just interview a couple of like feminists here in Belgium just so they can give their idea on organizations, archiving. So yeah, the next person I'll be interviewing will tell you a bit more about that. So very exciting. My name is Wilson Erasman. I am a student of African languages and cultures here at the University in Ghent. I'm the oldest of uh, a whole bunch of people. <laughs> Uh, I live here with my uh, mother and my siblings. I moved to Belgium in 2007, so uh, I wasn't born here, I wasn't raised here. I'd just like to say that I have a lot of things to a lot of people, but mostly I'm just a nice person. <laughs> That's great. That's already very nice. I like that as an introduction. <laughs> I put a poll on my Instagram, on my story, to ask people like in Belgium, if you have to think of like black feminists of, you know, women empowering women, who would you say? And a couple of people said your name. A couple of people in my DMs really said you should really ask her to talk about um, activism oh. and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> very nice. That is very, very nice. Yes. So as a first question, what is black feminism in Belgium to you? Well, um... The thing about feminism um, in and of itself, uh, I wasn't as busy with it as I am now. What I mean as busy with it is that I wasn't, it wasn't something that I was completely um, aware of before I came to Belgium. Granted, I was a teenager when I came to Belgium, but um, once I was here, the very many uh ways in which my identities um, intersected were attacked almost immediately and I had to find some kind of um, way to fortify myself uh, and my spirit um, against these attacks and it started with me explaining a lot of things and then I realized I was explaining my humanity to people who didn't already had an idea of who I was. Um, and then when that wasn't working, I decided that uh, maybe the best thing to do would be to research, <laughs> <laughs> looking into things. Um, of course, uh, some of the stuff that we find in the research or what we do or read or, or come across is a uh, is just um, intrinsic knowledge that we already have from our lived experiences that has been. Yeah, made into something that you can then uh, cite in a paper or something. Um, not to say that black feminism has not done a lot to, um, if not everything, to uh, truly like put a mirror up to society and show uh, how black people are treated, and in particular black women and femmes. And um, so I found a lot of solace in that. When it comes to Belgian fem black feminism, I'm still still very much on the lookout mm -hmm. for um, organizations and places and people. I feel like it's very fragmented or dispersed. I feel like it's very, um, we know of 
black feminists exactly like people all call upon um no this way rachel olav um uh, the little head ones yeah. So many Sabrina. So there's so many people we can call upon. Um uh, but organizations that are just meant for black women in Belgium, I have I'm yet to come across. Mm-hmm. Now, um I'm use I'm based in Ghent, so most of what I do is from the Flemish side. Um so I'm not even sure about what's happening on the french speaking side i do know in brussels which tends to be the hub for a lot of black life in belgium yeah. that there are some things that are um mostly french speaking um organizations but dutch speaking ones are very few and far between and especially especially ones that are just um to do with black women and friends uh that is something i'm yet to come across because i was writing uh, for the first uh, edition of this um, intersection of magazine we were supposed to be working on i realized in my research oh <laughs> this i can name a lot of black feminists but i cannot name black feminist organizations in belgium and that's a problem um, so yeah that has been so far my experience with black feminism in belgium When it comes to archival work, um I am a student of African languages and cultures. I think I've said that before. Um and the way the the archive being space works in Belgium is very um exclusionary in that not all of us have access to it and if we do we don't have access to all of it. And so much of the stories that are told about us by uh, the dominant culture is kept away from us but it's accessible for the dominant culture which allows them to continue making stories about us without any regard to what our um, input in those stories are so um when it comes to archiving i think it's quite important for uh, any upcoming organizations and there are so many um that are trying to kind of consolidate the black black people in that we understand that there is a lot of power in numbers um so like black history month belgium and the different also uh, student organizations ayo umoja uh, karibu lewe is that uh what we're trying what they're trying to do is uh, kind of make that a more accessible kind of um method so that it is for the people by the people But then again uh, you ask yourself a lot of questions as to how we should go about that because if it's the same way that it traditionally happened then we are saying um that what has already happened is good enough and i don't think that is a statement that we would all agree with at all for black people history and legacy are very very closely linked to one another because uh, we still very much occupy the same physical space our ancestors did and so which means that the same kinds of violence is being visited upon us and so we have a very um, close relationship to legacy because our time on this planet is finite and we have no idea for how long we can claim space without paying for it with the ultimate price being our lives yes. when we think about how we exist in this context and in this time um it's very important to also think about how we will continue to exist when we're not longer yeah. physically present mm-hmm. and that's what archiving at least means for me and that's why this edition of black history month is also quite quite important for a lot of people the black experience is localized in the united states so mm-hmm. um oh we are uh we are not a monolith we are very much seen as one yes exactly um, so the black experience in the united states is supposed to be the experience of all diasporic africans yes, um or a diasporic black people and it's not, no, no, it's not. <laughs> um, they are touchstones and there are ways in which that the similar the experiences are similar but there is a very very specific context to living in belgium mm-hmm. and being black and being female presenting that mm-hmm. is um very different uh, mm-hmm. from the you even rest of the rest of europe and the united states so um it helps uh, the cause for us to be able to 
properly document these experiences not just for future uh, for future generations but for ourselves because mm-hmm. uh, living in Europe is so hard when it comes to microaggressions and we do not understand the toll that can sometimes take on the spirit and um, one of the functions of white supremacy is to make us feel like we are alone, that we are going through things alone, and so that we are isolated. We, uh, we go into our universities and we don't see people who look like mm-hmm. us. Um, when we go to our workplaces, we don't see people who look like us. And so the only locus of blackness is for many of us, our families, chosen families, mm-hmm. and uh, our, our, our blood kin. And so, uh, and those relationships are also made hard by living in a very capitalistic, individualistic society. And so, um, the toll that that takes on black women and femmes in Belgium is very specific. For black women, in, even in our social political spaces, we are the one that everybody comes to for solace and help and advice, but we have nowhere to go to. And organizations, and places that are specifically safe spaces for black and femmes, uh, black women and femmes, is an, a very real tangible way of counteracting that. So we can talk to one another about it and find solace and help and support and just somebody to listen to. For the first time, we have momentum in a very real way. And uh, I think we should capitalize on it and kind of protect one another. So when crazy organizations come for people like Rachel and they come for people like um, Sabrina and mm-hmm. then uh, we are able to say like, you yeah. don't get to touch them. You don't get to, 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 to try and ruin them and bring pain upon their lives. You do not have access to them in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I think that's very, very important. Yeah, it is. I agree. I've been... I'm thinking about community a lot <laughs> the past few uh, months, uh, yeah. months, weeks, almost half a year now, um, because I was trying to figure out what it is about living back home that I missed, and uh, Corona brought a lot of things up for me. Um, I started to ask my questions, myself questions about home and questions about belonging and what it means to have people as part of your tribe, because mm-hmm. I have no answers. <laughs> <laughs> but all of these questions have been very interesting and what I keep on coming back to is strength in numbers we have mm-hmm. strength in numbers and uh, I think it's very very important for us to continue down this way uh, with the with the real goal of actualizing uh, an actual like uh, even place a space um, that in that makes it easier for us to breathe uh, yeah we need to. that we really do hi again everyone so right now we're wednesday the 24th and i'm again in brussels at rosa with olivia yesterday i talked to francine she's someone that works for fear effect she's the one that i talked about i think two vlogs ago we planned a meeting on monday but we just saw that the is this your the measures have changed so we have to work from home basically but yeah still very exciting i'm very excited to uh, finally have a little interview with them because i've been wanting to do that i also talked um to someone else i'm gonna do an interview with her i'm gonna keep that as a as a surprise for now but uh besides that just gonna do some more work and talk to you later Good morning, everyone. So today we're Monday the 29th already. Um, So this vlog will be uploaded this evening, which will also be the last vlog. Before I ended this series, I kind of wanted to give you some updates. A lot of people have finally been answering to my emails. So I sent a message to Dalila Hermans to see if she wanted to kind of be interviewed to talk about black feminism here in Belgium. And she actually replied that she's very much interested. So I'll be doing that this week, maybe next week. Um, Then normally today I had an interview with Francine and Maman Marie-Claire from Firefec. But because of the new rules um, regarding Corona, I'm not allowed to go to Brussels anymore. So I hope they're willing to do um, maybe a Zoom meeting. Then Collective Susu also replied they'll be um, filling in a questionnaire and they'll also be um, included in the project. So that's very interesting as well. And then I reached out to someone from Les Darte and they also replied that they're willing to, you know, 
participate and reply to some questions. I feel like I'm definitely gonna document it because, you know, archives and all. And we'll see if um, there's a possibility to, you know, upload it on the YouTube channel for BHM or, you know, put it on Instagram. But I'll definitely uh, be documenting it. And then uh, I also wanted to share that I've been doing some research on uh, social media archiving because it's not something I know a lot about. And I've also been watching some videos on black archives in the Netherlands, in um, Great Britain, in the United States, been watching some Instagram pages on archiving. So that's kind of what I've been up to. And just I've basically been writing everything down. The project really just started. I feel like it's gonna take a while, but this is definitely the beginning. And I'm actually really glad already with, you know, what we have and I feel like everything will be fine. Especially the community part um, in Belgium. I just kind of have to work together and do our best. And Black Archives are definitely coming, you know. Okay, stay tuned and I'll see you. <laughs>